Today there were a handful of moments that went viral on Twitter from the Young Thug trial that's ongoing. And I really want to talk about them. I need to make it clear right away, I know next to nothing about the Young Thug trial. I don't know what the particulars of the case are, what he's being accused of, what he's potentially facing. I don't really have a clue, but you don't need to know the lore behind why the trial is happening to understand why these moments are so wacky. I'm going to go ahead and start by showing you what I believe is potentially one of the biggest head-scratcher moments the American justice system has ever heard. Regardless is less than 1% of this whole indictment. This reminds me of this anime named Bleach, where it's 16 seasons, every episode is about 18, 20, 20 episodes. Sorry, every, yeah, every season is 18 to 20 episodes. And they have season four and five, they have these bouts. They're the villains of the whole thing in season four and season five. The main characters are trying to get them out of soul society. Pardon the interruption. I'm not trying to jump scare you here, nor am I trying to intrude on this passionate speech about the Bount arc from Bleach, but I think it's important because I imagine most of you haven't seen what she's referring to, and God bless you, keep it that way. The Bount arc in Bleach is regarded by many, myself included, as one of the worst arcs in all of anime. It's basically about vampires that get introduced out of nowhere and then leave out of nowhere, never to be addressed again. It is a garbage filler arc that serves only to waste your time and insult your intelligence. It is truly trash. And I'm one of those poor souls that endured the torture of watching it. I didn't know the Bount arc was filler. So I subjected myself to that almost never-ending nightmare. So when she brought up the Bount arc here, I, it was like an old wound reopening and then having salt poured in it. it like I had a, like a repressed memory come forefront and then like post-traumatic stress disorder as a result because she brought up the Bount arc in this fucking trial for some reason. Now, she is representing someone else who is involved in this case. His name is Rodalius Ryan. And... The way she's trying to weave in the anime reference with the point she's trying to make is interesting. You go to season six, you don't hear about the bounce. You go to season seven, you don't hear about the bounce. Why don't you hear about these important characters? Because they're filler characters. It's a filler season. Me and Rodalius, we're fillers. We're not integral to the story. They just drag him out of prison to jail to make this bigger than it has to be. We're basically distractions. So, as a juror, what can you do to tell the state, we're not gonna be distracted. We don't need to listen to filler. You come back at the end of this with a not guilty for a daughter's Ryan. You tell them we do not wanna waste our time on fillers. We just wanna get to substance. So I guess, sit back, enjoy the show, get some popcorn, because this is not justice, this is a circus. Thank you. I find that that closing remark, this isn't justice, this is a circus, hits even harder since it follows an entire speech about anime in a legal setting. Like, she isn't wrong, this has set the dial from serious all the way to silly. We have cranked that shit up now. We're talking anime. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, this is how I imagine a Discord trial might go. You have Judge Wumpus presiding over a case slamming the gavel. Order! Order! Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Tipping a fedora. This reminds me of that time in Naruto when Rock Lee took off those training weights against Gara. Am I right? <laughs> Isn't that right, jury? Like, it's just... It has taken anime and put it in a setting where it shouldn't be. This is a very professional spot that deals with people's lives. Like, you're there to represent your client, and you're using anime in your opening statements here, I think is uh, probably the wrong move here on the chessboard. Not the strongest opening. Based on how she sums up her opening statements, it seems like the point she's trying to get across is that her client is not important in the overall case, thus... Their presence is only there to serve as a distraction or inflating everything. Thus, you know, it's filler. Like Bleach Bount Arc. Now for the next clip I'd like to show you, you're gonna have to really open up your ears here because the audio on it is some dog ass. It's pretty bad. For some reason, quite a few times throughout the trial, the audio would just get really fucked up. But to Jeffrey Thug had a different meaning. 
Now, some of you have read books about Tupac and what it meant to be thug life. Thug life, the hate you give little infants, Fs, everyone. Meaning discrimination and racism hurts all of us. We teach that to our kids. Now, this is Young Thug's lawyer. And right now, he is trying to get into the kitchen with a ton of ingredients and start cooking. And the recipe that he's following, well, it's it's got some interesting flavor to it, to say the least, with the direction that this dish ends up going. That was not what Thug meant to Jeffrey. Thug meant and means to Jeffrey something very personal. It was his path. But if he could ever make it, as a musical artist, and help his family, himself, and his many others out of this endless cycle of hopelessness, he would be truly humble under God. That's what thug means. I tried my best to edit out the long pauses he takes. I, I, I don't know if he's like a classically trained actor or something, or he's auditioning for a thespian troupe. I don't really know. But he takes these like long, really dramatic pauses mid-sentence, and it just dragged everything so long. My theory is that the reason he keeps pausing and stopping for a little bit is because he's stalling for time so he can continue to come up with something in his noodle up here, and he eventually comes up with a banger. He ties it into... This is not what Thug actually means to Jeffrey, Jeffrey being Young Thug's real name. He then says the Thug stands for truly humbled under God. <laughs> and I, when I heard him say that, I did, I did one of these. I, I, I actually just shot back. I was like, wow, he fucking did it. He pulled off a miracle. Like I could imagine like the jury standing up and clapping like, man, that was so moving, wiping tears from their eyes. Truly humbled under God, now it all makes sense. Like, it's such an incredible Hail Mary play from the lawyer here. Obviously, this is a, a bunch of fish paste. <laughs> that is, the thug in Young Thug doesn't stand for anything, it's not an abbreviation. That wouldn't make any sense. Let's say, let's just play ball with this idea here, this fantasy that it stands for truly humbled under God. That would mean his name would be Young Truly humbled under God. That would be his artist name. That is nonsensical. But it was a really interesting tactic here. A very odd strategy that I couldn't help but appreciate. Like, I found it impressive to go to this level of, like, on-the-spot thinking to try and just pull something out of your ass is admirable. I unironically love that strategy. It, I think it's just a banger. It makes me want to give it a try. Like, uh, the, the moist on my shirt, it stands for... Mopey outlook is super terrible and it's all about having a mopey attitude is a bad thing and we got to turn that frown upside down. It's all about a positive outlook, baby. And actually, that's a perfect segue into another thing the Young Thug's lawyer tried to pull off in the in the trial today. It's it's another very incredible strategy. And the indictment that the prosecution had the grand jury return says he's holding up a blood sign, and that furthers his conspiracy. There's nothing wrong with holding up a blood sign, but that's not a blood sign. A blood sign's like this, it looks like a B. That is a P. Jeffrey's fingers are down. And what you'll learn is that Jeffrey just released with Sergio Kitchens, performed known as Gunna, a song that is wildly popular. It's around the globe. It's called Pushing P. And it's positivity. It means any circumstance you're in, if you think positively about something, you can make it through. You're pushing positivity. You're pushing P. Jeffrey is showing <coughs> the P. If ever there was a time for a standing ovation in court, it would be right then. This guy, in front of all of humanity and God went out there and said, actually, what you're looking at is a P with his hands. And it references pushing P, which stands for pushing positivity. <laughs> that is so good. That is so fun. What a fucking W. Like, I'm sure most of you remember pushing P from like a year or so ago. 
I never fully understood exactly what it meant. I believe, like, the main usage was pushing P references, like, pursuing success while still maintaining integrity, like, being loyal to the people that you care about, that you're close with, like, your friends, like, never forgetting where you came from while pursuing success. Which, I guess in a way, you could argue that pushing P is pushing positivity, I suppose, <laughs> though I don't think the P ever stood for positivity, ever. But from this point forward, if I ever see pushing P again, that's immediately where my head's going. From now on, if I see pushing P, I'll be like, oh, pushing positivity, I get it. <laughs> All because of this lawyer. I don't know how these interesting strategies will pan out in court for Young Thug and everyone else on trial. I, I, I don't, again, I don't know anything about the case. All I know is that these clips from today's trial are <laughs> really interesting, to say the least. I just had to share them. I had to talk about them a little bit. I guess we'll see how it all plays out. That's really about it. See ya.